in national politics ever since the dissolution of the House of Representatives two weeks ago has continued unabated. Supreme Court currently is at the center of the bone of contention regarding the validity of the government's decision to dissolve the lower house. The Premier, meanwhile, provided a twist to the entire episode, calling his move as political. Good morning, I'm Sarah Chitrakar and these are the headlines of the hour. Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli submitted a written answer at the Supreme Court yesterday to the writ petition filed at the court against the dissolution of the House of Representatives. In his response, Premier Oli argued that the lower house was dissolved using the rights vested in the Prime Minister. Prime Minister Oli also said that he was forced to dissolve the House of Representatives due to the continued non-cooperation towards the government and that the move could not be reviewed judicially as it was a political issue. We have more in this report. In a written response submitted at the Supreme Court on Sunday, Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli said that he dissolved the House of Representatives using the vested rights of the Prime Minister. Premier Oli described the dissolution of the lower house was the inherent rights of the Prime Minister and the parliamentary system rather than the articles of the Constitution or the constitutional system. In his reply to the court, Premier Oli argued that the decision was taken based on the assessment of the political environment and does not fall within the criteria of judicial imposition. Prime Minister Oli also denied the possibility of an alternative government, stating that he is the Prime Minister as the leader of the majority party Premier Oli has argued that Article 76 and other clauses of the Constitution would come into force in the case of a coalition government. The Prime Minister has claimed that the Constitution has entrusted the right of the dissolution and also has no preconditions in this regard. Premier Oli explained that the government had recommended to the President for the dissolution of the lower house using executive rights as per Article 75 of the Constitution. Meanwhile, the President's office has also submitted a response at the Apex Court regarding the dissolution of the House of Representatives. In the reply, it has been mentioned that the lower house has been dissolved in accordance with Article 76, sub-Articles 1, 7 and Article 85 of the Constitution and the basic essence and values of the parliamentary system and the practice of the country. Speaker Agni Sapkota also submitted a written response at the Supreme Court on the issue today. In his response, Speaker Sapkota said that the dissolution of the House of Representatives was against the Constitution of Nepal and claimed that the decision would be automatically dismissed. The Speaker replied that he was not in favour of the decision as there were other provisions in the Constitution to dissolve the lower house. The hearing of the writ petition is scheduled to be held from this coming Wednesday. The NIPSE witnessed an impressive surge of 88.12 points on the first trading day of the week yesterday while the intraday transaction crossed 6 billion rupees. Following the massive surge, the NIPSE closed at an all-time high at 2,175.39 points yesterday. All the 12 sectors contributed in the overall increase in the NEPSI. The Life Insurance Group went up by 550.95 points, followed by the Non-Life Insurance by 268.42 points, the Manufacturing Group by 264.44 points and the Subgroups by 103.44 points. Likewise, the microfinance group surged by 77.6 points, the commercial banks group by 70.92 points, the development bank by 46.1 points and the hydropower by 38.93 points. Investors of Himalayan Distillery Salt Trading, Nepal Reinsurance Company and Prime Commercial Bank earned maximum points yesterday. A total of 14.02 million units of shares of 212 companies were traded to bring the intraday market turnover to a little over 6.3 billion rupees. Nepal Life Insurance Company and Prime Commercial Bank had the highest individual turnover of a little over 500 million rupees. The weather across the country has been partially affected due to the effects of westerly winds. 
High hilly areas in the country are witnessing snowfall while other places have received moderate rainfall. The Meteorological Forecast Division has predicted fluctuation in the weather in all parts of the country. The westerly low pressure will result in light to moderate rainfall in Karnali Province, Gandaki Province, Lumbini Province and Bagmati Province will receive moderate rainfall, while Province 1 and Province 2 have been forecast to receive heavy rainfall. Tarai is likely to witness prolonged spell of foggy weather condition and a considerable drop in mercury in the next few days. Meanwhile, the sudden change in weather in Bagmati province is likely to continue till tomorrow. In our Public Voice segment, we had asked the locals of Palpa what might be the reason for the leader of the certain political party backlashing at the leader of another party. Let's take a look at what they had to say. नेताहरुले आफूलाई राम्रो आफ्नो पद शासन जोगाउनको लागि यति काम गर्छन् विकास उन्नति गर्नु भन्दा राजनीतिक बाटो चाहिँ पद प्राप्त गर्नु नै इनहरु यो कटाक्ष गरिरहेका छन् खोक्रो आदम बर्दे खाएर आफू माथि हुनको लागि र निर्वाचनमा आफू हाम्रो पार्टी सक्षम छ भनेर जानकारी दिँदै हिन्नको लागि राजनीतिक चरित्र नभएर चाहिँ नि यस्तो गर्ने गरेको राजनीतिक चरित्र हुने हो भने के एकअर्कालाई गाली गर्न पनि कुनै जरुरत छैन पार्टी भन्दा माथि उठ्न नसक्नुको कारणले नै यस्तो किसिमको गाली गलौजहरु आइराखेको अवस्था आफु विपक्षमा रहँदा खेरि अर्को दलको चाहिँ गाली गलौज गर्ने अर्को दलकोमा पक्ष विपक्षमा रहेर चाहिँ काम गर्ने र उहाँहरुको त्यो धर्म नै हो जस्तो लाग्छ इट्स टाइम नाउ फर आवर सेगमेन्ट पब्लिक पल्स वे टेक्स्ट अस विथ योर ओपिनियन Yes, the question, why has the coronavirus infection rate in the country decreased? Your options are A, result of awareness, B, decrease in test, and C, weak virus. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Let's move on to sports update. Province 1 won the Prime Minister Cup Women's National Cricket Tournament, defeating armed police force by six runs. In the final played at the Deokuri Cricket Stadium in Lamahi, Dang, yesterday afternoon, Province 1 elected to bat first and posted 105 runs, losing four wickets. Province 1 had a good start as skipper Rubina Chetri and Apsara Apsari Begum put on 58 runs for the opening partnership. Apsari top scored for Province 1, contributing 34 runs with the help of 5 fours. Kajal Shrestha scored an unbeaten 29 runs, while Captain Rubina added 18 runs. Skipper Sitarana Magar was the leading wicket taker for APF, claiming three wickets. Chasing a victory target of 106 runs, APF fell short by just six runs. APF needed 13 runs of the last over to win the nail-biting final but managed to score just 6 runs to post 99 runs in the allotted 20 overs, losing 7 wickets. APF had a bad start as wickets fell at regular intervals and at one stage, 5 wickets were down when the score was 32 in 6.5 overs. Mamta Chaudhary was the leading run scorer for APF. APF scoring 34 runs. Karuna Bhandari also scored an unbeaten 26, while opener Jyoti Pandey added 14 runs. Skipper Rubina Chetri and Alisha Khadia were the pick of the Province 1 bowlers, grabbing two wickets each. Province 1 won the exciting final by six runs and recorded their first ever title win. Players who were compelled to stay at home for nine months due to the COVID-19 pandemic will now be busy as schedules of sports activities are being published one after another. The men's football team is scheduled to play the World Cup qualifiers and SAF Championship this year. Likewise, the Tokyo Olympics is also scheduled to be held this summer. Players weren't able to practice during majority of 2020 as most domestic and international events were cancelled due to the pandemic. However, the schedule is busy for the players this year. The Tokyo Olympics is scheduled to start in seven months. Twelve Nepalese players are participating in seven events including Taekwondo, Archery, Karate and Judo 
through wildcard. Gopi Chandra Parki will participate in athletics at the Tokyo Olympics while Gaurika Singh and Alex Gadegard Shah will represent Nepal in swimming. Meanwhile, in football, Nepal will host the World Cup qualifiers at the Dashrath Stadium in about two and a half months. Nepal will play against Chinese Taipei on 25th of March and Australia on 30th of March. Likewise, Nepal is scheduled to face Jordan on 7th of June. Towards the end of the year, Nepal will participate in the SAF Championship. Meanwhile, the women's football team is scheduled to participate in the Asian Cup qualifiers. Likewise, the men's cricket team is scheduled to play four matches in the World Cup League 2. Nepal will travel to Oman to play a triangular series against the host and Team USA from 19th to 28th of March. Likewise, Nepal will play a triangular series in July against Namibia and host Scotland. Meanwhile, the women's cricket team will participate in the T20 World Cup qualifiers. Nepal will play against host Malaysia, Myanmar, China, Bhutan, Kuwait, UAE and Hong Kong in the tournament which will be held from 16th to 25th of September. Meanwhile, the women's volleyball team has a possibility to take part in the Asian Championship. Likewise, in badminton, an international series is scheduled to be held in Kathmandu in September. Apart from this, the schedules for domestic tournaments are also being made public. It's time now for our special segment of the beat. Pokhara Metropolis has started the legwork to lease out its tourist spot, Patale Chago or Davis Fall for a period of 35 years. The deal has however not moved ahead due to the dispute surrounding Todipatan High School, which is located in the premises of this major tourist attraction. Pokhara Metropolis is all geared up to ink an agreement with Sethi Canoeing Private Limited to construct infrastructure to develop the area for adventure tourism. Despite the verbal agreement, some officials of the Metropolis too have stood against the deal. The Sethi Canoeing has proposed the construction of glass bridge, park, restaurant, tunnel and operating motorboat, among others. The proposal also mentions share of 5 to 10 percent from the profit and an annual incentive of 2 million rupees for Pokhara Metropolis. Meanwhile, the school management has been making an annual income of 30 million rupees from entry fees to Davis Fall and renting some shutters. A community school in Bhutan has started bus service for its students who earlier needed to walk for some three hours to reach their schools. The bus service facility has started after the school sought help from the local government. Some 200 students from this Mandapi secondary school were forced to walk for three hours, covering a distance of up to 24 kilometers to reach their school at Mandapi rural municipality. The students who earlier used to be tired following their long walks have expressed their happiness to avail of the bus service. The other schools in Bhutan have also followed suit and started bus services for their students. Some 253 homeless and stranded individuals from Province 1 have been rescued and shifted to a welfare shelter. A welfare organization, Manav Seva Ashram, coordinated with Social Development Ministry of Province 1 and local government to rescue these homeless people. The welfare organization in just a couple of weeks has rescued 76 individuals from Japa, 111 from Sunsari and 66 from Moran. 19 of the rescued are minors, while one individual is physically challenged. Nine of the rescued children have been brought to the federal capital Kathmandu, while others are kept in Itahari. The rescued individuals fall in the age group of 5 to 80. This is Sarah Chitragar for our segment of the Beat and Kantipur News Desk. Before wrapping up, here's a look at the top stories once again.
Prime Minister Oli submitting a written response at the Supreme Court calls his political move political, argues the lower house was dissolved using the rights vested in him. The Nepse witnesses an impressive surge of 88.12 points, closing at an all-time high of 2,175.39 points. Single-day turnover crosses 6.3 billion rupees. India grants emergency approval to Bharat Biotech's Covaxin, but faces questions for not publishing efficacy data for the homegrown coronavirus vaccine. And Manchester City crush Chelsea 3-1 at Stamford Bridge to gain a major boost in the English Premier League. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.